Bingo, one o'clock rock on a Monday, every Monday. Research in Manoa. Today we have Dr. Mark Ronsted. He's a specialist in HMRG and a design engineer. Not design engineering, and that stands for, wait, I'm going to tell you, Hawaii Mapping Research Group, HMRG. Okay. Very important, because we're going to talk about that. And that is at the Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Planetology uh, in, in SOAST at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, Mark joins us today to tell us about a special competition that is happening here in December. Mark, thank you for joining us on the show. Oh, thanks for having me. How'd you get into this? This is really interesting. I mean, it's a, it's a vehicle, it's an autonomous vehicle. Uh, we're gonna see pictures in a minute. Mm -hmm. How did you, why did you bond up to this particular technology? Well, um, I've been working on marine technology for a long time, um, mostly with um, seafloor mapping sonar. But I've also been helping students with um, robotics competitions, like the FIRST Robotics, um, the MATE ROV competition. And so when we heard that um, the Office of Naval Research and AUVSI, which is Association for Unmanned Vehicle System International, I never remember the title. Mm. Um, but they're the sponsors of this competition. International, oh, in, yeah. Okay. The Association for Unmanned Vehicles International. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, they are the sponsors for this competition. And there's a, a number of corporations who are also um, helping to bring the, the competition to Hawaii. Okay. Um, and uh, and um, UH is going to put one in. Yes. You have one ready. Your students, yeah. your group, your team, you know, ready to go here in a few days. And so the people can understand what we're talking about. Uh, let's, let's take a look at some footage we have uh, of, how, of what this looks like, this vehicle. Bingo, wow, that's an impressive <laughs> piece of gear. Why do I want one? It looks great, right? You know, by default, I want one, but why do I want one? Well, um, more and more um, different vehicles are getting autonomous capability, you know, the ability to have a machine do something that might ordinarily be done by a person that would be dirty or dangerous or boring. Um, and, you know, machines if they're set up properly, if they have the right sensors, they can do a lot of things very quickly and safely. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is intended to get students interested in working on these technologies. Um, and so the competition is all autonomous. The vessel is a bunch of sensors. It's programmed in advance and just set loose in the course and needs to carry out a number of tasks, mm -hmm. and we can kind of go through the individual so tasks. So why, why would this be, I mean, this has got to be a connection, not at the engineering school, but at HIG. Oh, no, this is at the engineering school. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the engineering school. That's right. You happen to be at HIGP. That's right. Okay. That's right. But it, you just crisscrossing yeah. your disciplines, that's all. Yeah, yeah, I'm basically helping to mentor the team. Yeah. Um, a fellow who's a professor in mechanical engineering named Zach Taylor, is kind of the faculty lead. Uh, he's um, at the College of Engineering. Yeah, he's in the College of Mechanical Engineering. Okay, okay. And um, there are about 20 students, uh, undergraduate students who are on students. the team. Yeah, engineering in mechanical, elect electrical, mm -hmm. um, you know, different fields, computer science. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's also a, um, a graduate student that helps out with, mm -hmm. uh, with running things. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, what are the... You know, I, I like to talk about the device for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that you guys created, the College of Engineering and you as uh, the leader of this. You, uh, you know, how, when did you start working on it and how did you create it? I mean, how did you, you know, do the essential, um, what do you call it, design, the, the, uh, the design of this vehicle? I mean, you've got to have a design to make it th move through the water and not fall over or sink. Mm -hmm. 
So wh where did you get that from? How did you design that? Well, for this competition, all of the teams have to use the same vehicle. And actually, there's a picture of it on the, okay, on the monitor right now. So they're all using this. Yeah. Who makes this? It's made by Marine Advanced Research Incorporated. Mm -hmm. um, they have a range of vessels that are this sort of design. Um, it's a catamaran with a suspension for a, a load platform. So it's a load platform that makes it... On the load platform is going to be the stuff that your team is putting together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the sensors, um, you know, the control system, and then there are propulsion motors that, for the university team, attach to the back of the vessel and also to the front. Okay, so um, you got the, 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 the basic structure, we can see it. Right. Um, that comes from somebody else. But right. the platform includes all the electronics, all the smarts, it also includes a propulsion system mm -hmm. and includes all the navigational connection between, you know, the computer and the, uh, the smarts right, uh, and, right. and the propulsion system. Yeah. Right, right. And so in the competition, there are, um, gosh, I think there's about seven different tasks that the uh, vessel mm -hmm. needs to, to do. Mm -hmm. Like what? Uh, well, I guess, uh, could we go to, yeah, yeah this okay. is the... Okay, um, good, yeah. The first task, which is just kind of proving that you have a functional boat, um, it needs to be able to pass in between those two buoys, the red and green, and navigate for 10 to 30 meters and then exit between uh, a pair of buoys. Mm -hmm. uh, now this is all done autonomously. There's no one remotely operating the boat. Uh, so the boats typically have one or more cameras so they can see these buoys. Um, also very common are LIDAR systems, and the UH boat will have a LIDAR system. It has a LIDAR mm -hmm. um, so to measure distance to buoys. And color. Yes. They have yes. to tell the red versus green right. color. Right, right. They need to... So that's uh, pretty sophisticated. But, yeah. But why, you know, well, you know, maybe I would cheat on this by saying, well, just point the, the boat directly through the buoys. Put it, put it on a course. Put it on a course well, of exactly so many degrees and put it straight. Make sure it goes straight. Use you know, whatever inertial guidance or, uh, you, know, satellite, uh, you know, satellite control and make sure it just goes straight. That'll get you straight. Well, water. I mean, you could do that, although the position of those buoys will not be the same from day to day oh. and possibly not even on the same day. Oh, so you know, they're subject to, read to off change. The right, okay. right. So it, it does need to be able to recognize those things. So, so okay, so this, these sensors, the camera, mm -hmm. is going to look at the shape, find the buoy, and then it's going to look at the color and figure out what's the buoy on the left or the right. Mm -hmm. And then, I, I have trouble, you know, uh, conceptualizing this, and then okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to send signals to the navigation propulsion system exactly. to stay on course vis-a-vis -vis the, the, the buoys it has already put in its memory. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, could we go back one picture? Um, yeah. Uh, this is sort of the first main task. Um, the team gets a, assigned a sequence of colors, and they need to have their um, vessel, their boat, go and, you know, go with circles around these different colors in the right order and are in the right direction. And there's also a bunch of black buoys, um, spherical buoys, and you have to avoid them. If you hit one of those, then you get points subtracted. Mm, mm. Um, so this is, uh, you know, kind of a big task for um, you know, recognizing the different colors and shapes, um, avoiding the round black balls, and going around the colored ones in the right sequence. Mm -hmm. Well, so I mean, look. Let's let's hold on that chart for a minute. Um, the one with the colors, yeah. So it. As a programmer, I can program. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would write a program for this, mm -hmm. and I would say, well, you you head toward that first buoy over there, mm -hmm. but you don't head directly on. You head slightly to the right, mm -hmm. and then when you get close enough, then you make a loop around it. Mm -hmm. And here's how to make a loop around mm -hmm. it. When you finish with the loop, then you look for the blue buoy, mm -hmm. and then you when you get there, you don't 
you don't head dead on to the blue buoy. Right, you, right. You make you make a, a, a what is it a clockwise turn around the blue buoy, and when you've done that, then look for the yellow buoy. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just I can see lines of code here telling yeah, you what to do. Is exactly. that what happens? Yeah, yeah. That's what happens. Um, the sensors, the cameras on the boat, um, are used to look for the different colors and shapes and you know, figure out where the buoys are, and the LIDAR helps to determine exact ranges. Ah, uh, sure, to you have buoys. to have a range, so the cameras can't help you with that. Well, I mean, if you had multiple cameras, you could you do, um, yeah, like them, yeah. binocular vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the LIDAR is, you know, it gives you an exact number and range. So you have um, to coordinate the yeah. cameras with the LIDAR. Right, you've got to take all that information in and um, there's a process known as simultaneously mapping and localization, which is actually used in um, a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. When you come to an area and you don't know anything about it, you start mapping it using your sensors to build up an image of what's there. Mm -hmm. And then as you go into the area that you're mapping, uh, you can extend the map and also use what you've determined from the map to figure out where to go. And, and in the map somewhere will be the the blue or the green exactly. or the yellow exactly. uh, buoy, and then that'll help you to determine a course. Yes, yeah. And then, uh, okay, so the, the, the machine, I love this stuff. So the machine will have a course then. It will, it will actually achieve a course based on the mapping, mm -hmm. and uh, it will be able to tell the propulsion system, go left, go right, and this is how long you go, and it'll be verified, verifying that you're not passing too far ahead of benchmarks, right? Right. You're going toward right. a given point, but when you reach a certain distance with the LIDAR, mm -hmm. then you do this and do that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, but it could fail, right? Well, it, it can. What kind of failure would you expect? And I mean, what, what well, is possible? I mean, one of the things that the team has had problems with, um, and I, I should say that it's the students who are doing all of this programming. Yeah, what fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but we found that, you know, these um, colored buoys on a... Um, overcast day they show up really well but if it's a bright sunny day and especially if it's later in the afternoon when the sun is low in the sky mm -hmm. you get a lot of backlighting mm -hmm. and it's really hard to tell what color the buoy is mm. well then you're out of luck huh yeah well what they're talking about is putting colored filters and having multiple cameras so one would be sensitive to green one would be sensitive to red and using that to try and um, subtract them some backgrounds it's very creative isn't it yeah I'm yeah with that yeah. yeah so then you put all those in there and then you get a composite picture mm -hmm. and then you really know where the yellow and the red yeah. and the green and yeah. the, and then and then you take that and feed it into your your course plotting um, program right yeah. right and yeah. so you have a okay so you have cameras they they're acting as sensors feeding into mm -hmm. the, the, the mapping, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the LIDAR, and mm -hmm. the LIDAR is, uh, mm, what? The LIDAR is also another piece of yeah, data another that's input coming in. to making the map. Okay, um. and then you have the central processing, I imagine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which takes all this in, and it has its instructions, as I was outlining before, yeah. Yeah. Um, to, what, to the course that you want mm -hmm. after you get this external data through the sensors. Right, right. right. And then it builds uh, a navigational course which has time, speed, direction, all that thing, mm -hmm. all that with the navigational course is supposed to have to get you there. Right, right. Wow, that's really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you must love well, this stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess um, if you want to go to the next picture. We're going to go to the next picture right after this break. Oh, okay. Because I think by now whoever is watching is going to get a little excited <laughs> anyway about what we're doing here. Is, and they want to be on the team. You might have 10,000 people on your team. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark Ronstadt. He's a specialist in HMRG design engineering at the HIGP, University of Hawaii. We're talking about this competition at HMRG uh, coming up this month, very soon. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi with the Think Tech Hawaii show, Stacy to the Rescue, highlighting some of Hawaii's issues. You can catch it at Think Tech Hawaii on Mondays at 11 a.m. Aloha. See you then. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, 
easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Okay, we're back. We're live with Dr. Mark Ronstead um, of Hawaii Institute of Geophysics and Technology and Planetology. So you were giving me the universe of all these organizations and how they work and who, who gets mm -hmm. together in what, you know, what organizational chart, so to speak, for the competition. Tell us about that. Okay, well, um, the, you know, AUVSI is sort of the, you know, the main company or organization, really. Uh, and the funding comes from the Office of Naval Research. Um, there, I believe Northrop Grumman is a major sponsor. Mm -hmm. And then here in Hawaii, um, Navitech is a big sponsor. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, they've been helping out a lot with the competition. Yeah. This is their cup of tea, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there are a bunch of organizations like the University of Hawaii System, uh, Honolulu Community College, um, you know, that are sort of contributing at least um, in some way or another. Mm -hmm. um, the UH team has gotten some financial support from the um, local chapter of the Marine Technical Society mm -hmm. and the local IEEE chapter. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of um, people involved, um, but it's basically to put together this competition that will start a week from today. First uh, time for UH. First it's the time. first time for UH. It's actually the, only the second time the competition has ever been mm -hmm. run. Let's take a look at last year. We have some footage for how it was last year. Yeah, this is actually two years ago. The competition two years is ago. every two every years. Every two years, right. Okay, so this is, uh, these are the people who were involved last time. This is not in Honolulu, this is somewhere else. Do you this know is in Singapore. Singapore, okay, you mentioned. Okay, and it's raining, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see um, some of the buoys out in the water. These are teams working on their robots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, this is for the press, I guess. This was made. It's the same kind of um, boat structure. That, yeah, uh, that very were, similar. Yeah. Very similar. And you can see all the gear piled up on the yeah. top. Now we can yeah. appreciate that. Um, yeah, there was one boat. 2014 recap that I saw that actually had a radar mounted on it. You can uh, use anything you want, is yeah. that the idea? Yeah. So you can, if you can find additional sensors that would help in your programming, you, yeah. you, you can put yeah. them on top. Yeah, this is another of the tasks that will be in this year. The mm -hmm. vessel has to dock autonomously, mm -hmm. you know, based on signs at the head of each dock. It's like a parking technology for these new yeah. cars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's one of the buoys. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's another aspect of the competition where the buoy flashes different colors and you have to recognize the sequence of flashes and that determines what you do in the next stage of the competition. Mm -hmm. are they, they're going pretty slow. Could they, could they go faster or is this it's uh, not important to go fast? Well, it's not that important to go fast. Um, you want to go precise more than fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think uh, some do go faster than others, but um, you, know, you get points taken away for running into things. Oh, I'm sure. And yeah. so uh, most teams try to go at a, you know, a reasonable rate, but not so fast. Not that way they can correct. Yes. They, and you I'm want. sure they got correction, correction program also. If they mm -hmm. find they're off course, you know, you want to be able to correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's now, it's, what is it, testing, it's looking, it's thinking. <laughs> Can, yeah, and can almost sometimes it running into things that, uh, you know, That's we're supposed to avoid. Um, <laughs> but as you can see, there were teams from five different countries, uh -huh. um, Singapore, Australia, Japan, South Korea, and the U.S., who were in the competition two years ago. And all of those countries are represented in the competition that will be here in Hawaii uh, starting next week. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I guess we're about finished with it. Yeah. Um, I just uh, want to, okay, want to pursue something you started with. Is it's coming up soon. It's coming yes. up like in a few days. 
tell us how the competition runs and where and whether we can go and watch. Yeah, um, the competition will begin next week on the 11th, although the first five days are basically for the teams to get some experience operating their boat in the actual it's competition like practice. venue. Right, right. They're not they're necessarily being graded for that. They're just sort of getting yeah. organized. Yeah, okay. they're practicing. The real you know, sort of nuts of the competition will happen on the weekend of the 17th and 18th. Mm -hmm. And that's when the teams will be going for scores. And um, by the end of the day on the 18th, the winner will be, uh, will be announced. Okay. And, and who are the judges who will determine that? Um, are you a judge? No, no, I'm not a judge. I'm involved with the UH team. That would be a conflict. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we're kind of kept at arm's length from the people who are running the actual competition. Mm -hmm. Just so no one can say, oh, you know, the UH team yeah. has an unfair advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we kind of do in that, you know, we don't have to ship our boat to a venue, you know, That's far true, away. It like, could get broken or who yeah. knows what in the shipment. Um, but, you know, as much as possible, we're trying to be just like any other team. Yeah. So I actually don't know exactly who the judges will be. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some will be from AUVSI and from Office of Naval Research. Mm -hmm, sure. And, uh, so I, they rate each task, whether, the, whether this team was able to handily succe successfully perform this task right. or that task, right. and give them point score, and then it must be averaging uh, and tallying up the point yeah. score, and then the one with the highest point score right. Is, right. is the one that wins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I just, you know, I, I just wonder uh, how this is this is an order for as far as uh, Office of Naval Research is concerned, in order to achieve better navigation, better perception of the environment, mm -hmm. um, better way for the, for this device, this boat, to know where it is and how it's going to do this and that in a completely autonomous way. That's right. Would you say that we we are already we meaning all of us are already at a point where we know a lot about this, or are we just starting to learn it now? Well, um, there's a lot of work that has been done on different aspects of this. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, computer vision, you know, being able to recognize objects mm -hmm. in, in a field of view, um, using different sensors to come up with a map of an area. But um, this competition is pretty unusual in that it's, putting all of that together, and the work is being done by undergraduate students. So, uh, Well, they're, you know, undergraduate students, they, they're <laughs> unfettered, right? Yeah. They'd be yeah. very creative, especially about coding things. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's a good thing, you know, that's why ONR wants it that way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the sort of underlying motivation is to get students interested in this kind of technology, get them skilled in this kind of technology, yeah, yeah. and, you know, have a people who can do this kind of work in the future. It's an irresistible thought to think that this kind of technology would help a naval vessel, mm -hmm. might even help a weapon mm -hmm. uh, to get where it had to go and do what it had to do. Uh, and as I mentioned before the show, there was some similar um, exhibit uh, that was shown a few years ago. It was by Mar Margot... Um, uh, right, and uh, Brian uh, Bingham. And, and, and right, mm -hmm. the same people. Yeah, Mar Margo uh, Edwards and uh, Ryan Bingham uh, at at uh, Snug Harbor, the yeah. University facility in yeah. Sand Island. Um, to uh, to it was a smaller, much smaller vehicle, mm -hmm. and it, it was using sensors to sense chemicals. That's right, and That's right. other things that might be antigens, you know, in the water might be terror, um, terror weapons, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and it was it was not. It was not autonomous, though. It was controlled by radio. As well, I, I mean, it was semi-autonomous in that you could give it a sequence of waypoints. Yeah. Uh, it had a GPS receiver. Yes. And it would go and follow that sequence of waypoints. Yes. So you could set it up to map an area. Yes. You're recording sonar data or chemical data. Yeah. Um, but if you gave it a waypoint that wasn't in the water, it would try to go to it and, you know, run into whatever got in the way. Yeah. So we, we do have some experience in this. Um, some, we, yeah. You know, yeah. We, we know how to put these components together. Mm -hmm. But I guess it depends. I mean, if, if I gave you a million dollars to do this competition, <laughs> you could get more components, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, cost is a, is a big part. Um, you know, the UH team doesn't have an infinite budget, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so 
finding things like a LIDAR that was inexpensive enough that the team could afford it, you know, meant that you couldn't have the features that, you know, fancier LIDAR systems have. Yeah. Um, At the same time, though, the, uh, I, I mean, I don't know how much latitude there is vis-a-vis -vis the CPU, mm -hmm. the computer that's bringing all this together and making the navigational plan. Um, is that something which is standardized in this competition, or you can go out and get a big one or a little one or whatever you... You can use whatever you want. Yeah. Um, the UH team is using a um, Intel Nook. It's the next unit of computing. It's a very small computer. It's about this big, mm -hmm. but, you know, as powerful as a desktop machine. And you program it with a desktop machine, I guess. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or, I mean, you can use it as a desktop machine. Yeah. Um, so you get a keyboard, monitor, yeah, and yeah. you can look into it, and you can use uh, software to program. Right. And then put it on the boat and have it run. Mm -hmm. um, actually, there's a wireless connection between that and the shore, because one of the requirements for the competition is that you have to be able to shut your boat down. If it starts going out of the area, then you need to have a remote shutdown as well as a button on the side of the boat that someone can go up to yeah. and hit, and that will disable it. And you can, can, you, ha, can you set it up so you can call it home? Yes, yes. Okay, you can that. flip it in between autonomous and remote control so that uh, at the beginning of a competition, the students would actually drive it out to the starting point and then switch to autonomous, and then from I that see. point on, it's on its own. Yeah, and then if necessary, you can switch it yeah. back and bring it right. back. Right. And the bringing it back is not necessarily a point against you or anything, or is it? Uh, well, if you have to sort of take over in the middle of a task because the boat isn't Failed doing, yeah, yeah, then that is a yeah. you know a loss of points. One of the thing. Uh, uh, we don't have a lot of time left, but one of the things is uh, when, when everybody gets together and all these teams are out there readying their boats and mm -hmm. practicing and connecting things up, what have you, improving them, improving them to the last minute, you know, do they talk to each other? Do they compare notes? Uh, can I borrow some duct tape from you? <laughs> you, know, can, you know, can you show me how your thing works, or is it a little too tense for that? Well, um, I've never been to this competition. It's only happened once before. Um, but in other robotics competitions that I've been involved with, like FIRST Robotics and the MATE underwater robot, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that. Um, you know, a big idea behind those competitions is what they call gracious professionalism. If a team needs something and you've got it, then you, know, you share it with them. Wonderful. I, yeah. I'd like to go down and see it, maybe take some footage. So where and when should I go? What's the best time and place? Uh, well, actually, if we could go to the last slide, that's an aerial view. Um, the competition will be in Kehi Lagoon. That's Sand Island in the lower part of the picture. Mm -hmm. And you can just see the edge of the Sand Island Bridge. So the competition will be in that protected water um, between Sand Island and um, that little reef island. Mm -hmm. And to get there, you go over the bridge and make your first right. Um, and then follow the road around. There's the um, Honolulu Community College Marine Education and Training Center is the white square building um, almost all the way right to the, the right. Point, yeah. And then there's a large parking lot and a boat ramp that will be used to um, deploy and recover the, the actual competition boats. Well, good luck, Mark. Oh, thank you. Good luck to your team. Uh -huh. And we are all going to learn a lot by this. And good for Hawaii for participating in the competition. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Hopefully, uh, in years to come. Yeah.